What's up, guys? Johnny Galaxy here, and welcome to another episode of The Hypothesis. I noticed that you liked my last theory. I, I mean, hypothesis. Um, please don't sue me, my pet. My last hypothesis revolved around the big question: Is classic Sonic from the past or another dimension? You can check it out on Icon in the corner. It was very well received, and for that, I am grateful. Now, today we're talking about. How Devil May Cry 5 actually fits in the DMC timeline, like the canon timeline. Now hold on a second, don't get me wrong, I'm not siding with the Dante with black hair, I support the white hair Dante, okay? I have a bad experience of making videos game related that have controversial topics like what happened with the Smash Bros sequel theory video and I was right, so you can all suck a dick! DMC3 was supposed to be the first game in the timeline. Here's how DMC5 fits in the timeline for those of you who don't know by now. At the start of DMC5, we're not introduced to the Dante that we all love, nor Nero. Uh, I like Nero, he's a cool character, I guess. Nor Virgil. We get to see a teenager with black hair called Dante. Now, big spoiler alert for those of you who haven't played the game, because I'm about to die right in. In this game, there are two different worlds, one where humans live with devils who look like humans and they all live human lives, and another which is called Limbo. Dante! <laughs> Don't shoot! My name is Kat, I'm not a demon! I'm still in the real world, you're in Limbo. How come I can see you clearly? I'm a medium, a, a psychic. I can phase into Limbo and communicate with you. I can see you, talk to you, but I'm not actually in Limbo with you. If I pull the trigger, I'll die. A parallel version of the world I was just talking about, except it has just suddenly gigantic cracks and holes opening right under your foot. Uh, maybe you heard some weird voices and some text in the screen just jump scaring you. No? You didn't get jump scared by that? I'm sorry. Dante sides up with his lost twin brother, who he finally gets to meet after so many years being apart. He don't quite remember him, so Virgil has to fresh up his memory. Dante, it really is you. You don't remember me. No. How much of your childhood do you remember? Uh, not much. I had meningitis when I was seven. Why my memory? Why? <laughs> They told me I had a car accident that resulted in total amnesia. Age? Seven. Your point? Well, meningitis is a human affliction. You are not human, Dante. All war is fought with deception, and you have been deceived. Your past has been hidden from you for a reason. Rewind a bit, who are you again? My name is Virgil. I established the order to help find a way to fight the demons. Besides swords and bullets, you mean? Such weapons can win battles, but not the war. We use force, yes, but we also use intelligence, politics, propaganda. You really believe you can make a dent? Make a dent? With the two of us working together, I believe that we can defeat them. So that's what this is about. You need me to fight the demons, help you save the world. What else were you planning on doing with your life? Oh, you guys do seem really nice, but uh, I'm more of a loner type. Trust issues, work alone, that kind of thing. Dante, I don't think you understand what is at stake. If you want to leave, turn your back on me. I'm powerless to stop you. But you'll be making a grave mistake. Not just for yourself, but for mankind. For mankind? Yes. What makes you think I'd give a shit? At least give me a chance to show you. Show me what? Who you really are. Dante sides up with his long lost twin brother Virgil to kill the Demon King, who killed the parents, uh, so they basically did it for revenge and also so they could save humanity, which was being manipulated by this demon slash man slash, you know, business dude. If you see his face, you see that face? It's an evil face right there. Everything good this far? Well, they managed to kill a demon, 
and in doing so they fused together Limbo with the human world. Basically if I didn't say, mention this before, demons, like the bad kind of demons, like the, the real creepy demons lived in Limbo. So by fusing those together you can find demons with the purest form at the same place in the same city with humans and that is not good so it's basically all went like now the part where things get real messed up is when Dante finds out that Virgil's objective was to rule the world all from the start it's the beginning of the end for the demons Mankind would be free. Yes. Free from the demons. The path is clear for us to rule. What did you just say? The path is clear for us to rule. To rule what? This. Everything. Virgil. You, you mean like Mundus? No. No. We'll be nothing like Mundus. We'll respect our subjects, not enslave them. Subjects? He means you. He means humans. I thought we were fighting for freedom. It was his freedom we were fighting for, not yours. They both end up in an intense battle where Dante wins and Virgil gets to leave half dead. <laughs> is under my protection now. You've chosen the wrong side. You're not human, Dante. You never will be. Now normally when you use the Devil Trigger in this game, which is basically a way to activate Dante's demonic powers, we see him turn into some kind of some kind of dark knight. But in this game, the only thing that happens is that his eyes change a bit and his hair turns white. So at the end of the battle with Virgil, Dante overused his devil powers and that caused his hair to turn permanently white. So he looks more like the good old fashioned Dante. Now that you know the basic from DMC5, I would like to explain how the end of this game ties up to the DMC3, which is the start of what is known to be the first game in the DMC timeline. At the start of DMC3, we can see classic Dante with his, you know, white hair. He's, he's a bit older than in DMC5 or the DMC5 version of Dante. He, it will justify also his more cool attitude. In DMC3 we can see this kind of ruined world crawling with demons which could be what was left of the world after Limbo fused with their human world. There Dante meets his twin brother claiming that it's been nearly a year since they last met. It's been nearly a year since we last met. Where does the time go?
You see? You see? I'm not making it up. It's right there. It's right there. Now, we don't have too much backstory from DMC3, given that it was supposed to be the first game in the timeline. So they kind of didn't explain too well the relationship between Virgil and Dante. But in DMC5, we get to see the whole backstory of Dante. Everything that happened from his birth. Meaning that the last time Dante saw Virgil, kill as well, had been at the end of DMC5. Now, another thing that makes DMC's story different from DMC3's, well, I mean, the story's not gonna be similar anyways, but kind of the, the characters and stuff is that Virgil seems to be a completely new character in DMC5. <laughs> Unfortunately, our souls are at odds, brother. I need more power. I've been looking for you for a long time now. Our mother gave these to us. I think she knew that this moment would come, that we would find each other. He don't resemble the older version of Virgil at all. He's kind, he's nice, tries to be, you know, ni a nice dude. Jeremy, how the hell does that explain a transformation from one character to another? Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I'm going to that now! You see, this isn't the last thing we see from Virgil in the MC time. We have this special chapter called Virgil's Downfall. That's right, boys. And then we see how Virgil has a certain amount of obstacles to face. But you're dead. It's funny you had to die to understand humanity. I rescued you from demons, remember? It gave you a home, a reason to live. No, you used me and you betrayed me. Everything you hate me for, it had to be done. Really? You deceived us, Virgil. Me and your brother. Dante, now that's a real man. You're weak. Almost pitiful. You'll never be half the man he is. He faces all dark feelings inside him, like how he thought his mother loved Dante more than him, and how he believed that Dante betrayed him. You don't belong anywhere. Guess that's why you're here. Well, that and because I killed you. He was always her favorite. You know that. The way she admired his impulsiveness, how he followed his heart. You should find her. Show her what you've done. Finish what you've started. You killed him? How could you? He was your brother. He was your favorite. I could never be like him. Always waiting in his shadow. Always second best. Well, not anymore. But I always loved you equally. You saved me from this, to break my heart. Why? Look at me, Virgil! I'm here to say goodbye. What have you become? We gave you power, and you used it to kill! After everything we taught you! Everything you taught me was wrong! All you gave me was power, nothing else! I brought you into this world, gave you love! Doesn't that mean anything to you? Where's your heart? I no longer have one, Mother. No. Virgil! Basically was trapped in an illusion that he, he that his own mind created. That filled his heart with darkness. Ooh, that, that was some dramatic shit right there. You see, I, I can use dramatic vocabulary too, I don't know. In the end of the chapter, we see how Virgil ended up being that character we see in the DMC3. A Virgil who is obsessed with power. Well, I think that basically ties up the start of the DMC3 to the end of DMC5. The only question is... The only question that remains unanswered is where is Cat? And I kinda don't have any real evidence to show when it comes to Cat, but I personally think that she just left. Yeah. She needed to, you know, do her stuff, and she left. Um, 
That, that's what I think. I mean, I can make another theory about that as well if, if you want. If you wanted that, but but hey, that's just a hypothesis. A game hypothesis. Hashtag totally not copying the outro of MathPad. Yeah. So, peace out.